Hey, food friends, and welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Whether you're looking to get on your very first store shelf or you're looking to grow your national or even international food brand, this podcast is going to teach you what it really takes to launch, grow, and scale a packaged food brand. Hear the food founder journeys of brands growing in their industry so you can fast track your food business success. I'm your host, Ainsley, and this is the Food Founders Podcast. All right, Chaz, welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Why don't you go ahead and introduce us all to Sat Beverages and who exactly you are in this space? Yeah, great. I'm I'm happy to be here. My name is Chaz Smith. I'm one of the co-founders of Sap Beverages, which is a beverage company that makes sparkling waters and sodas with a base from sap water from the maple and birch trees. So think healthy, healthy, better for you, sparkling waters and sodas. Um, I founded the company with my cousin, Nikita Salmon, who's unfortunately not here, but uh, we're both from Vermont. Our family comes out of the maple syrup industry in Vermont and the broader forestry industry. So the really the impetus for the company was, you know, a changing beverage industry. Everyone's looking for healthier beverages, better for you stuff that is way lower in sugar. And what we realized is that sap water, which is um, it comes directly from the maple tree is what maple syrup is made out of. But in its original form out of the tree is this amazing base liquid for beverages uh, that can be utilized. Uh, a la something like a coconut water where you're getting a healthier hydration. So about three years ago, we started SAP uh, without any real beverage experience and have grown it into about uh, 1,500 stores in the Northeast and also uh, a very big e-commerce business as well. And who who are you finding as like your primary target audience right now? Who is like loving your drinks? Yeah, so when we started, we... Our approach was a little bit different than what we're doing now, which is we created these pure sap sparkling beverages. You know, one was more like a a seltzer and one was more like a soda, just from the pure sap right out of the tree with carbonation. And that was a very new concept for a lot of people uh, where you're almost creating a a new category in a sense and really educating a lot of people around the ingredients specifically. And what we realized is there was a big market for that, especially in the Northeast where there was a lot of education and understanding of what maple is and what sap is. Uh, But the further you sort of get outside of the Northeast, a lot of that education goes away and there's a lot of confusion for some customers. And so as we've sort of evolved and added new products into our line, what we've really focused on is saying, um, you know, pitching it and marketing it much more like products people would know, let's say sparkling water or soda being sort of the leading indicator of what the product is. And then in a secondary fashion, really educating around why it's better for you um, around sort of three main uh, propositions, which is um, the products contain all five essential electrolytes. Uh, They contain prebiotics naturally, which is great for gut health. Uh, And they also contain B vitamins and trying to really simplify the message around, hey, this is more than anything, a trade up from your normal sparkling water or a trade up from your soda. Uh, and we saw much better adoption that way, especially outside of the Northeast where people understood much better what it was. Uh, they knew how it fit into their life. Um, and our job as marketers of the products is really to trade people up to something uh, better than what they're drinking now. Got it. So it's that nice trade up from you're kind of capitalizing on an occasion that someone is already using and it's just like, Hey, this not only tastes amazing, it's better for you as well. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. You know, right now it's no secret that the sparkling water industry is exploding with products like LaCroix um, and a lot of the new ones out there. But what we quickly recognized in it is, you know, 99% of the sparkling water products out there are the same exact thing. They're basically demineralized water plus chemical natural flavors whatever you want to call those there's no health benefit at all there's arguably you know some negative aspects of that and we've seen some companies and i think the best example being spindrift coming in and saying hey there's a better way to make sparkling water with real ingredients and you know as we thought about um some new product concepts we realized you know there's all of this this is a booming industry but no one has sort of created 
uh, sparkling water with a, a health profile yet that really drinks still like the sparkling water that's still affordable in that um, you know one dollar or under price range in a, in a bulk package and we figured that we had the unique ingredients and capabilities to build products like that um, and so we launched those a few months ago in Whole Foods down here in New York and we're starting to expand those on the East Coast. So to kind of get back to what you're saying is I think you either, if you want to just launch something completely new <laughs> You either have to have a lot of money or be very creative in getting people to understand what it is because customers obviously have habits, they have behaviors, and cracking those behaviors to, to build something new into their life is not always easy. And you know whatever hack you can find into their brain to make it easier for them to understand the product um, and, and buy yours instead is the way to go in our opinion. So I want to hear, I mean, you guys have been on quite a journey in the last three years. Um, mm -hmm. talk to me about one of the biggest wins that you guys have had where, you know, you and the team just feel really proud about one of the accomplishments that you've been able to, to achieve. Yeah, I guess two things come to mind. I think anytime you're, you know, starting a food and beverage company, um, you're looking for those early proof points around, you know, that you've created something that people actually want. And you know, I still go back to the first, you know, it seems very early on, but, you know, it's the first ever demo sampling that we did in a store. And we, you know, this, so this was back in 2016. And, you know, we're going, I went into this it's seemingly small task of, you know, setting up shop in one store in downtown Burlington, Vermont. And, it's the first time you're getting real feedback from consumers in the moment. And I think for a lot of other food entrepreneurs out there, they would say the same thing. It's really scary when people are basically judging you instantly for, for what you're doing, what you're making. It's I, one of the, I think, harder parts of being a food entrepreneur in some ways is just, you know, having total and complete confidence in what you're doing at all times. But anyway, I, you know, we, it was just a smashing success in sort of this proof point among all these strangers that we didn't know. We sold a ton of product that day. It was one of the best demos in the history of that store, uh, which is the biggest co-op, one of the biggest natural food stores in Vermont. And it just, it gave us all the confidence in the world that, hey, it's, this isn't just in our head, uh, isn't something that we're just passionate about. It really has a market around it. So, you know, that's number one. Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll leave it there for now, because that, that, that to me is, is still that initial early proof point where you can say, hey, yes, we have something here. That Oh, gosh, you guys must have been on cloud nine <laughs> from that because you're right. It is like you're putting yourself, your product out there. You guys have been working probably so much on it. You put so much blood, sweat, and tears into it. And then to kind of like hold your breath as those first few people yeah. are trying and, it. Um, and of course, you know, there's much bigger moments along the way, like getting into your first chains. Whole Foods, for example, was a huge win for us. And you know, uh, there's plenty of other chains and other stores where you, it's taken a long time to, to, you know, get those relationships sort of get into the black box of how retail works and, and convince people to put the products on the shelf. There are certainly many of those moments as well. I think it was, you know, we, we can talk about it a little bit more later in the podcast, but we were also asked to come on Shark Tank, which is an amazing experience. And I think a lot of the um, traction we got coming out of the back end of that show was another proof point for us that um, this really does have a, a good place in the market. Yeah. Could you, could you even dive into that a little bit more? Because I'm sure that's done a lot for, you know, proof of concept even more for the brand, but yeah. Can you talk to us about what that process was like and what it did bring you at the end of the day? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's been fun to see a lot of other food and beverage companies on the show recently. I think that the show's done a, a good job of highlighting some great brands. And and for us, we had really no ambition to necessarily go on the show. They wrote into our website and I actually thought it was a joke at first, but they followed up again and you know, were really persistent on us applying in. And they also said, Hey, by the way, if you if you want to do this, you have to film it in three weeks out in LA. And we we're sort of like, What? Okay, this is very fast. It was very early on in our business, so we were basically less than a year in, wow. and so we were still really figuring out what we were doing in a lot of ways. And you know, for any for any other people listening to this, thinking about going onto the show, one thing I would say is, 
you know, if we had waited another year, the impact would have probably been even a lot greater. And, and sometimes, you know, you just got to pick your timing right. And for us, we just felt like at the end of the day, either three or four million people are going to see this or they're not. And, and we have to do it. So I went on with my cousin and this was, yeah, we filmed it. I think it was September 2017, something like that. So a, a good amount of time ago at this point. And, you know, we don't need to get into all the details of the filming process, but it was really an amazing experience. We had a really good time. Uh, and I think it more than anything really made us focus on, on the business even further, like really try to drill down when you're giving our, our pitch on the show about, you know, the, the great parts of the brand, you know, what we need to improve. It really just clarified a lot for us. Um, we ended up getting an offer, which we turned down on the show, but I think more than anything coming out of the back end, um, we got just an enormous amount of trial with the product. A lot of people buying online. We got a huge amount of feedback from every state in the country, in, in Canada. And, and there's just a huge amount of data that we were able to collect around, okay, what is working and what's not. And it really sort of, I think, confirmed for us our fundamental premise, which is, you know, we have these great maple, pure maple products that are going to do really well in the Northeast, but there's just a lot of people who don't understand what the heck this is it this is in other parts of the country so you know sort of coming out of that the show we said okay we can have we can we can have multiple product lines but we need to be much smarter with how we're pitching them to folks uh, and how we're going to gain acceptance with people and simplify our message in a lot of ways so um it was a tremendously positive experience for us um a little bit you know scary and anytime you're going on national tv it's a little bit scary but uh, we had an overwhelmingly positive experience with it. Awesome. That's, that's great. I'm sure it's, you know, really helped a lot of people being able to just validate, make those, open those doors for you and make those conversations a lot easier. Too, yeah. Right? Oh, totally. Retailers love the fact that we were on the show and it, yeah. you know, it re-airs a few times a year on CNBC even. So it's these just constant media, free media hits, which um, is, is amazing. That's great. And now talk to me about, one of the challenges that you guys are currently working through, like every new level of success, there's new challenges. Mm -hmm. What are you guys tackling right now to get you to the next level? Yeah. I mean, our, our number one issue, is, and I think this, a lot of food entrepreneurs would say the same thing is um, how we make the product, the co-packing relationships that we have to physically put the, the liquid in the can and make it. I think as we've grown, we've had to go through a couple of different partners, um, some of which, you know, you just have inconsistency with either the product, uh, you know, flavors, or just when people have time for you in their facility. There's just a lot of things as you grow, you need to be really smart and careful and, and lock in um, those key relationships. And, and so it's, it, I wouldn't say it's been, it hasn't been horrible in any one direction. It's just you know, new opportunities can come up all the time and you just need to be, you know, have flexible enough relationships where you can build inventory and build product and not get caught flat footed in the market. And I think, you know, it's been a little bit painful the last year, just with a couple opportunities sort of popping up the last minute and we couldn't really do it. Um, but there's also just been a lot of good lessons learned around, um, you know, really making sure you have strong co-packing relationships and uh, trustworthy people that you're working with as well. Got it. That's really, really helpful for everyone. And then for anyone who's listening right now who might be considering starting a food or beverage business or they're just getting started in it, you know, what advice do you have for someone who's brand new into this world? Yeah. One, one thing is just, it's a great industry with so many people willing to help out. And I just think it's the thing I love about food and beverage. And we touched on it earlier was just that, you know, you can directly affect someone's life by making it better, giving them a better product, something that's healthier and you just have that direct connection with a customer that, you know, maybe not a lot of other tech uh, businesses might have. And so it's just a very personable, fun, industry on on the one end i think on the other end you know what i see a lot is you know there's there's so many different ways to build these companies some people take the big vc money route some people have a slower growth route um there's always going to be sort of challenging times no matter what you do but i think you know understanding why you're building the business and um 
you know, what you want to be in, in some sense really helps clarify things because if you don't, you know, for us, we have a, a very specific passion around the maple industry and growing those maple markets in Vermont and, you know, integrating this, this product um, or this ingredient into people's lives in new and different ways that we're just very passionate about. And I think, you know, we, we have such a reason for being in passion even beyond the product that we're selling. And we also haven't taken any big money yet, which is, you know, an intentional you know, path that we've chosen to take. But, you know, we see a lot of other brands out there who just, they think it's a hot opportunity. They don't really have any passion for it. They, and then they die out quickly. So it's, it's a tough enough industry, especially early on where you can't make very high margins. And it's just very, it's a very tough and manual process to get it off the ground that, you know, be very intentional and understand why you're doing it and what you want to be is my main advice. Yeah, that's, that's really helpful. And then last question I have for you, what does your product pair perfectly with? <laughs> yeah, I think they're, you know, number one, just off the top, they're great lunch beverages. So if you're having a sandwich or whatnot, they're perfect for that. But, you know, we love using them as mixers also with a variety of different um, alcohols. We have it's one of our original products is called Sap Soda. It's a um, kind of a sweet, pure maple beverage that pairs perfectly with whiskey, which I would highly recommend. Um, but it's fun. It's, I think one of the great things with beverages is you can, you can try them in a lot of different ways to, to mix with. And, and so that's what I'd recommend more than anything. Perfect. Yeah. Beverage is such a fun industry and I'm going to test around with some different occasions with the product. You know, yeah, this is, I morning. should have showed this, oh, there we go. Yeah, should have so showed this see. earlier, but, um, this is our sap strawberry habanero. So it's sparkling water made with real strawberries and infused habanero. And, one of the reasons why we built this product is number one, there's not, a, there's really nothing else like it on the market, but number two, it's a great tequila mixer. So um, on the shelves at all the whole foods in um, New York. So if you want to try it out, awesome. you can get it now. And yeah. I love that. Like not only are you completely unique and different with the sap piece, but also the flavors, like that's a great, flavor right there that you don't see anyone else really having. Yeah. And I think it, I mean, it's such a brutally competitive industry. You have to figure out, okay, you know, how are you differentiating? Is it around the base ingredient? Is it the flavor? And, and we've tried to build products that don't exist anywhere else. And, and I think that's given us a special place on the market too, to your point. Cool. Well, Chaz, thanks for your time. Everyone go out there and try some sap beverages. There's a whole lot of different varieties um, and let us know what you think. The Food Founders Podcast is brought to you by the Fab Growth Academy, the online hub for driven food and beverage business owners that want to get on more shelves, get into more homes and really grow their food business. Inside the Fab Growth Academy, Fab standing for food and beverage, you'll have unlimited access to tools, resources, and training from myself and my food friends. So if you know you have a great product, let's work on building the business side of things so that more people can enjoy it and you can make the impact I know you want to make with your business. The Fab Growth Academy is now open. So hop on over to growmyfoodbrand.com to join me and your fellow food founders inside the Fab Growth Academy. I cannot wait to see you in there and help you grow your business.